Hello, everybody, and welcome to NBL Overtime. This is a show we know we have to do, but with heavy hearts, we're going to have to, over the next 50 minutes, fight through, because we are doing it without the man who made NBL Overtime, the NBL, and defenders at different times have no idea what's going on. He exaggerated and exposed basketball in this country better than anyone, and we miss him. And this, over the next little while, is going to be a tribute to our mate, Corey Homicide. Williams. Traditionally, he'd be here. He would have missed the meeting, but he would be here. <laughs> and we're going to try and do everything we can to honour that wonderful legacy. Liam Santamaria, hello to you. Hello, Cam. <sighs> it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough. tough. It's tough. Um, we already miss him mm -hmm. greatly. We have so many memories in this room and I think everybody around Australia, uh, Australian basketball and, and back home in the States understands how much uh, Corey meant to all of us, um, such great times in this studio with him in front of in front of that backdrop. It didn't have the pictures of Corey on it all the time, but it does today. And um, it's with a heavy heart that that we're here doing this. But I'm excited to kind of reflect and celebrate about how much fun we and so many other people had working with and, and knowing Corey. Kickstart this show, and he was all about entertainment, and he entertained better than anyone I've ever worked with and known. Let's go back and see him entertain both on and off the basketball court. In the backcourt between the legs, shakes bakes with the pill. Homicide to the basket. Yes, homicide, Corey Williams to the 10. But I'm telling you, that's how I got MVP. It's not a game out here. Trust me, I work hard. When attempting to do the unthinkable, get out the mud, you got to go 100. Because I'm making sure, if nothing else, I ain't getting stuck in that mud and I ain't going back. Yeah. You're not going to be in that seat forever, neither am I. This light ain't going to be on you forever, neither am I. So when, when that seat is gone and the light is off, the fuck you got to show for yourself? If you have a passion, chase it. Stay clear away from negativity. Negativity is going to come. As soon as you feel it, move away from it. Ego and pride, put that shit to the side. Put your head down and work your ass off. I get knocked down every game, actually. If you look, I'm always on the floor in the stand somewhere. Um, that's just how I play, reckless abandonment, so that's no problem for me. Williams with the jam! That's good night, Corey! This will be a word! This will be a word! As his tail is back off the first I'm not saying that. What I'm telling you is there's a confident team right now rolling in the NBL, and you got to watch out for them. Because right. we're playing like our lives depend on it right now. That's all I'm telling you. I had a conversation with her, her meaning basketball, the love of my life. And I said to her, it's time for me to leave you. You know I got to leave you. And you know what she said to me? Mother don't look back. Mm. Listen, I'm excited to be here. Let's just get to it. I get paid to, to give you my thoughts. Best job in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking good doing it. <laughs> Best job in the world. Yeah, but you just got to let people know. This ain't a cupcake league. Oh, 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 it's to oh, it's on. Corey Homicide Williams, finally! You can see, it's a feel good on you. It actually doesn't. I can make anything look good, so it looks good right now. <laughs> can you turn you around? Know? Look, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Let's be real on this panel. Hard dribble, right hesitation. Side step. Shot off balance. His leg gets kicked and taken from <laughs> under him. He hits the shot. It's a three-point game. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. The game gaze. You ain't coming back from it. That's the craziest call I ever had. I had two of my craziest calls ever, but the great one. Hey. The first one was the mellow ball triple-double. This. The second one was that shot. Only way I could be great is with gays. No, you. Stop separating us and keep <laughs> us together. His presence, though, lights up any room that he's in. And it's so great that he's here tonight lighting up the room as well. To join us up on stage, show your love for Corey Homicide Williams. I've learned is you have to identify your strengths, find spaces where you add value. With the decisions that I've made in my life, I want my daughter to be able to say, that's my father. And my mother to say, that's my son. That means I've made them proud.
Amazing, amazing. On the court, off the court, in the commentary booth, wherever it might be, it's a highlight reel for the ages. This is NBL Overtime as we honour our great mate, Corey Homicide Williams. And whilst we all fell in love with him as a basketballer, I think what he did away from the basketball court in recent years transcended the man of which he was and transcended anything he did on court. And Larry Kessman is the reason he was here. Larry, as we welcome you in, thank you for joining us. Did you have any idea when you had the vision to bring him back in the role in 2015, 2016, did you have any idea he was going to be able to do what he did to help this league? No, probably not to the extent that he did. I, I certainly had a vision for what he is like as a, as a person and I thought that's what the league needed. Uh, I thought, quite frankly, everyone was a little bit on the uh, saying the right thing and doing the right thing and uh, as we were trying to build the league, I think we needed someone that will just say it how it is and bring the energy and uh, and the swagger. So uh, I thought he was going to be great. I really believed in him, but uh, he definitely surpassed my expectations. So he was amazing. Did he cross the line a few times no. for oh, you, Larry? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Did he have to come up to the office? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say which, uh, which times, but half of the time I probably told him to cross the line. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he did. He pushed the boundaries. He either said it how he thought it was or how he thought it needed to be said. And he was a showman and uh, he did exactly what this league needed. He brought a bit of controversy, a bit of rivalry. Uh, a couple of times he probably overstepped the mark mm. and I had to, you know, get on the phone to him and just go, just, <laughs> just ease it back just a little. You might have just gone a little too far. <laughs> but uh, uh, when he pushed as hard as he did, that's probably to be expected. We left the studio here, this ex studio. We walked out the door and he said, I think Larry's going to call me again. <laughs> and I don't even know exactly of what moment that was. And he did say a couple of days later you'd, you'd give him a call. And, uh, but it never, it, it never stopped him being who he was. He didn't jump over. He might have shaped certain things in which he did. And I think that is a credit to the relationship that you and him built, uh, in particular when he came here in the middle of you know 2015. He, he was perfect, wasn't he? He was perfect at what you wanted him to do and what this league needed. He was very special. Um, so there are a lot of people that, you know, in my, in my way of life, I meet a lot of people. Uh, but there's something when you meet certain people and you leave and you go, that was special. Uh, and I think Corey's special source was the fact that he made other people feel special. Mm. And, mm. and what Leonard was saying before, he could get away with stuff that other people couldn't. Why? Because he was so genuine and you genuinely cared for the, you know, 95% of the time when he wasn't actually upsetting you. Uh, for the 95% of the time, he was just making you feel very special and he was genuine and he cared and, uh, you know, whatever I asked of him, he, I never heard a no. I don't remember, you know, Corey, can you do that? Can you do this? What do you think about that? Yep, yeah, I'm in, I'm in. And you know, the, that passion and, and the positivity, he's just very hard to stay angry at for very long. <laughs> is, you know, when, even when he did you know, dumb stuff, it was like, uh, all right, Corey, come on. And, 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 and the good thing about him is um, he was pretty honest about it and he might defend it for about a second and a yeah, you're right, okay, all right. Yeah. Maybe I did, so um, no, he was great. Larry, so many people know Corey from watching him on TV or watching him play ball or following him on social media. But he was so much more than that in terms of the impact he had on people um, as, a, as a motivator, as an as a advisor, as an inspiration of yeah. sorts. The work he did with the Larita Academy, with young people. Uh, tell us a little bit about your memories of him in that kind of space. Well, for, for starters, after a number of years, I consider him a friend. So um, NBL is a bit of a you know family to me people have been on a journey and, and you usually find out what people are about when things are tough not when things are amazing uh, and what we've done with this league and with huge help from him is pretty incredible so you form those bonds and uh, this is a man that never said no to helping leaning in so a good example is Larita Academy it has actually not necessarily directly related to NBL even though NBL supports it. it's an initiative from uh, my wife Anita and and myself, uh, funny enough, named Larita, not super creative. Uh, it works with uh, young uh, at-risk youth. And we ask him, do you want to come and help and lean in and, and help us run? It's an academy that's run over three days. And he was fantastic. I mean, how he connected with those kids is incredible. You know, they all look up to him and his story of how he got himself out of tough situations and coming from the background that he did and to make it. They're sort of the inspiring stories. and. Uh, I think one of the most inspiring things to me was when he was, what is it now, a couple of months ago, when he was very, very deep into battling this 
horrible disease and uh, he was very weak and, uh, and he probably had every excuse to say why not to come. Mm -hmm. uh, when we said to him, Larita Academy is on again and that was you know, earlier this year, he's like, I'll be there. And I'm like, oh, Corey, are you sure? Are you going to be all right? He's like, I'll be there. And uh, he was not in great shape and he showed up uh, and he was incredible. So um, for him, I think the heart that he had and the love for the people. And, th and that's what I remember. And for me, it's not about what happened every day. It's about what do you remember about the person? And for all of his trash talking and swagger and all those things, he truly cared. Uh, and he was so positive and he was so much about other people. And that's the energy that I remember. And that's, and that's what he left with uh, everyone that he met. Larry, we, as NBL fans, have a lot to be thankful to you for, but I think the number one thing is that you allowed us to get to know Corey Homicide Williams off the court, and your vision back in 2015 changed the lives of so many, mate. So thank you so much. And oh, thank you. It was a privilege. That. It was a privilege for me, and I just want to say to Corey's family, and from myself and my wife and my family, uh, how grateful we are that you shared him with us, uh, yeah. and we will make sure his legacy lives on. Well said. Thank you. Corey Williams really announced himself in Perth uh, in elimination final many years ago. And uh, two men who, one was a coach and one was on the court, Trevor Gleeson and John really had this to say only a couple of days ago. No, Corey, heavy heart, mate, that uh, you meant a lot to not only me, but the whole of basketball in Australia with your personality, your charisma, your smile. Uh, you were infectious out there, mate. And, you know, I had a quick trip over to New York for um, ESPN and I was able to get there and see you with Gazy and I knew that you we were kind of in trouble then, just uh, how you're looking and the weight. And, but the spirit never stopped. You, your spirit was so fine and not one day did you think, poor me, um, and you kept on going. But that's the character you were, mate. I'm going to miss you. You were a very, very close friend. We had some uh, great battles of mateships and going at each other, but we certainly had that line of respect and uh, I'm going to miss you, mate. I guess that the how Corey got to Australia was he actually came in as a uh, a replacement. You know, Roselle Ellis uh, popped his pec muscle and Corey was on the list of three guys and I rang up a coach, a mentor of mine that coached him and he played for my old team, Sue Falls. Then rang up and he said, yeah, Corey's a really good, he's, he's a great player, he's real strong. And so I had a choice of three and, and I talked to Corey and we landed on Corey and I rang the coach back and he said, uh, Trev, just let me give you a little bit of a warning. Corey, there's a little bit of New York BS in him and probably not a true word that was spoken. And Corey rocked up. He couldn't play the first game with us at the Crocs because we didn't have his visa. But that Corey rocked up to the game in white pants, white T-shirt, like white shoes, like in a cricket outfit and with a mohawk. And now, can you imagine this? He can't play because he hasn't got a clearance. I'm thinking the fans at the Swamp are going to kill you. I said, I hope to God that you can play basketball because they're going to kill you. Out language with his, with his dress and with his mohawk. He was making a statement. And, um, and then he got on the court. He played his first game against New Zealand over there in New Zealand. And I think we had like one or two days practice. That was it. And all Corey needed to do was a ball on the open court. And he was dynamic. We, we had no reason to be close to New Zealand then. And the game went to overtime. And the ball was in Corey's hands. And uh, for the whole lot, he had 28 points. We got beaten by a point. The only reason why we lost was Corey fouled out with those Australian NBL referees that he wasn't used to. But... He made a mark on the NBL and, you know, we've seen what he is made of to be the league MVP. And um, I'm just thankful that he could back it up, back it up on the floor and show everybody how good he was. I, I got a thousand stories with Corey and, and they all make me smile. And one of the pre-seasons, we took the guys in Townsville to the army and I knew that there was going to be water involved. So I asked Corey, said, Corey, can you swim? And Corey, and he's brash, and I said, come on, coach. I was born in Jamaica. Of course I can swim. I said, oh, okay, all right. And so uh, the Army guys picked us up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and 
They dressed us in the camouflage and straight away outside the army truck, they threw us straight into the pool. And I just talked to the uh, PT instructor, the physical education. I said, just keep a guy eye on the two Americans. We, I'm not too confident they can swim. And he said, yeah, I got it. No worries. So we had to jump in the pool and we had to swim across and we get out and we have to do 10 burpees, 10 push-ups, 10 iron bar raises, and then jump back in the pool, swim across and do nine. Then all of a sudden we get to around seven that we've done and we jump back in the pool and I, my silly self jumped in there to, to do it with the players. Then all of a sudden I'm swimming and the physical instructor teacher dives in the pool and grabs Corey by the scruff of the neck and pulls him up. And then we get out and I said, Corey, mate, I thought you could swim. He said, coach, I was doing really good, but I got a little bit tired and I thought I could just go to the bottom and then push off with my feet and get to the top. But what Corey didn't know, the, the pool was 27 feet deep. They used it for helicopter rescue. So when he went down, he couldn't get up. So the PT had to dive in and grab him by the scruff of the neck and, and lift him out. But uh, typical Corey, he wasn't going to stay on the sideline and watch. He uh, put a life vest on. Actually, he put two life vests on and came back in and joined the team. And uh, uh, it's a great story for uh, I was born in Jamaica. It's with a heavy heart I send this message to the Williams family. The really is certainly thinking of you guys in this tough time. But when I think of Corey, best story, there's really no best story because he lived life to the max. And even when he was trying to pull one over you, he was saying it in such a, with a convicted mind that he almost had you convinced, especially the time he tried to convince me he made 13 threes in a game. He finally said it was against the fire brigade, which really just made the story great. That is one of the fondest memories I have of Corey because he just brought a great essence to life. Wonderful tribute from two men who knew exactly what he was like on the basketball court in particular. Trevor Gleeson, his head coach at Townsville, and John really a wonderful teammate. We welcome in to the NBL Overtime Studio. A man, I can't do it. Gays! <laughs> That's what he would not say. He wouldn't use Andrew. He wouldn't use anything else. And Andrew Gaze is in the house. Thank uh, you. Thank you for coming, man. How, Liam. How are you doing? Yeah, good. It's, um, it's a tough time and we've had a few days now to digest what's, uh, what's happened. And unfortunately, it's, uh, it, it was the inevitable with um, the pain and suffering that he was going through. It was, that was probably harder to deal with when you see someone that you you care for dearly and you spend some time with going through uh, the challenges that he was facing. It was, um, it was tough, but what it was, it was, it was inspiring. Uh, I saw him maybe, I don't know, five or six days before he passed away, maybe a little longer. Um, and I spoke to him and he was always very open with what he was going through mm. and the treatment that he was having. And he'd show me his port in his chest where he had the, the chemo that was coming out of his pocket and he'd talk us through that all the time. And he was, to his last breath, just so positive about what the outcome was going to be. And... You know, you look at him and you feel him and you, you, your heart just melted because you knew how tough it was going through. But he had this capacity. You walk away from him thinking, shit, I think he's going to be OK. You know, he's, he's going he's to yeah. pull through this. Um, and he had a, a way in which that he could ease other people's stresses about him. Mm. Um, and, and I think that that was the type of personality he was and we saw it in other capacities. But when you're faced with the toughest challenge you will ever face. I think it really does show the, sh the true character of an individual and how you look that in the eye and how you're going to confront it. And for him to have the care and consideration for others, I think is a, a good reflection of the personality of the man. 
Drew, have, have a look at this picture here with Corey, yeah. with, with the mic. Yes. We, we both, you in particular, worked yeah. so closely with him during games. Yes. How much fun was he to work with? Well, it was fun because you never know what was going to happen. <laughs> hey, hey, we know. We know. <laughs> well, that's right. You guys would know. But the highs yeah. and lows of it all, and sometimes you're there and you think, is, hey, is, is Corey with us today? And then all of a sudden something will happen <laughs> and you'll go to a, a, another level and the excitement would be picking up and you'd be going, geez, he's, he's on now. And um, very engaging, uh, very unselfish, you know, in the commentary business. Yeah. The way in which that uh, you, you, you knew that there were times when it's going to be Corey's moment and you mm. had to let him run. And every now and again with some of the things you had to say, you sort of say, geez, I might need to look after the brother <laughs> right now and just, just try and cover over. He didn't really mean that. <laughs> this is what he really yeah. meant to say because he was uh, out there with well, some of his opinions. And that excitement really reached fever pitch when Lamello Ball was here. Oh, yeah. And you two had a wonderful... Wonderful moment. In fact, wonderful moments. Here's a little bit of that uh, wonderful game between uh, these two in the commentary box, our man and Corey, <laughs> and Lamello Ball on the court. By Machado to create some space. This one's oh, 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 The young fellow with another oh, Hezzy. Oh, Light oh, work. Oh, finish it to the basket. Please. This is the number one pick in the draft. Please. <laughs> Can we have a Micah unit on standby? Because our man, Corey, talk about the arousal levels. They are going through the roof. No, well, well, he. the thing about a lot of people uh, remember some of his uh, comments and very opinionated mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes his critical analysis of a game or an individual, yeah, it would hit home uh, pretty hard. But it was also the other way. Mm -hmm. And when Lamelo Ball was out here, if you... If you hadn't seen LaMelo play and just heard the commentary, you'd think that LaMelo Ball was the second coming of Magic, Larry and Michael all combined. And this is just some freak unicorn basketball that we've never, ever seen before because he had this... Uh, he, he was doing it for the individual with LaMelo, but he also knew the impact and the excitement that, that would generate a, across the league as well. And, and there was no doubt that... He had a, uh, an agenda to make sure the world knew about the NBL, about yeah. basketball in general, and the best way to do that is to try and highlight some of the stars. Right, we've got to let you go, but I just want to go back to Challenge Stadium, big elimination final, yeah. jersey off, people throwing water bottles at him. I love the romantic side of basketball. You were the man with him. <laughs> you were the man that had the microphone in his face when he finally came back. Out of the tunnel. If you think back to that moment <laughs> all those years ago, it, it's there's something beautiful about this mm. and the relationship you formed. Yeah, well, we had a, 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 a good friendship. Um, I think that there was respect for what he was doing, and I think because of what he's did, done as a commentator, we, we sometimes forget what he did mm. on the basketball court. He had that same brashness. He had that same bravado. He loved the confrontation. He loved to get in with the fans and, and, and poke the bear, so to speak. And, and, I, and I remember uh, the, the first thing when he's come off, and I, don't, I don't know if we were on camera at the time, but it was like, Gage, Gage, this is what I do. This is how I do it. This is what I do. And the people in the stands are yelling abuse. And he was like, yeah, bring it on. I want this. And he, um, he, he loved the moment. Um, and when you think of that whole Croc Nation, the Crocs were there. And yeah. I, 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 I shudder to think the conversations that Trevor had to go through trying to harness uh, Corey because he had this, um, this ability to make the moment a whole lot bigger sometimes than it actually was. And, and, and that's what mm. he brought everyone along on, on that journey. So uh, I, I got a... Uh, a great friendship. I learn a lot from him. I learn about, you know, how to engage the personality type. And, um, you know, he's going to be missed, but uh, those concerned about his legacy should not be concerned because he has had uh, made a significant mark. And he loved you. Mm. <laughs> I he, loved him too. He absolutely loved... loved working with you. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I felt that. I felt that with what we did on radio. I felt that on commentary. Geez, geez. <laughs> Why do they keep separating us? <laughs> Why do they do that? You know, yes. uh, that's how he was. And, and that made me feel good. I, yeah. I love it when I'm in a situation where I, someone feels comfortable enough that they feel like they can be themselves. And, yeah. and in some way, I was able to extract something out of him that made it a little easier or better for him. Then that's one of the highest compliments he could have paid to me. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew Gaze. Good on you. All the best. His memories of our man.
Corey Williams, from Andrew Gaze, a superstar in a different generation to the stars of today. Have a look at this. Hey guys, obviously a sad you know time with the the passing of Corey and um, just such a loved, respected guy you know all around the world and and in the basketball community. Um, so you know, I just want his family to know that we're all mourning and hurting with you guys. Um, this is not an easy time, as as I'm sure you guys know, and um, I just hope you guys know how much he was loved and the impact that he had on other people, you know, all around the world, but, you know, more specifically within the basketball community, um, touched a lot of people and um, Energy Smart was contagious throughout, you know, throughout his whole life. So um, a fighter, you know, to, to the full extent of the word, you know, even when battling something as tough as he was, the way he showed up every day with a smile was um, inspirational. So, you know, I'm sorry I can't be there um, for the services, but I just want him his family and everyone to know that he's so loved, respected and um, will forever be remembered um, for the legend that he was and is. What's up, guys? Uh, it's been a tough week for everyone, just mourning the loss of homicide and, you know, really grasping the fact that he's no longer with us. Um, I think there's one that you can take from his life is just to live life to the fullest and enjoy the journey. He always had that vibrant smile on his face and his energy was contagious. Um, and just to be proud of who you are, you know, his authentic swagger just touched the lives of so many people. And, um, I think it's a testament to a life well lived. So rest easy, brother, and I hope you can feel the love up there. I just want to give a shout out to Corey. It's that time right now, but uh, you know, I just want to say thank you for what you've done for the game. Thank you for inspiring me. Thank you for inspiring the younger generation. You know, thank you for that swagger you brought to the game. You know, it's something we didn't really have much of in Australia, but you know, you brought a different, different style of play to Australia, and you know, everyone's gonna, always going to remember you for that. And uh, you know, and also. All that stuff you say online, man, gets the people going. I love it. Thanks for motivating me to be better. You know, bringing them robberies up, man, getting me motivated for games, man. I loved it. Um, you'll be missed, brother. Rest in peace. May you rest in paradise, homicide. You're always larger than life from the way you played, the way you walked, the way you talked. You impacted so many lives on and off the court and helped shape the careers of so many young men and women throughout your time here. I hope that you're up there looking down and are smiling. You may be gone physically, but your soul lives on forever, brother. Sitting here trying to reflect on a life that was taken far too soon is crazy to think that Corey Homicide Williams is not going to be here around basketball, calling games, you know, dapping up on the sidelines, enjoying a laugh and a smile with his beautiful Cartier. Sonny's in the club when he can't see anything. I just think about all the incredible memories we've shared together and some of the moments of deep conversation we've had. You're a true icon of the sport. You're a true human being, someone who's molded me into who I am today. Um, for a lot of years, I, I wasn't the person I thought I was. And it wasn't probably only until recently that some of the conversations we'd had really resonated and, and helped me and, and guide me into who I've become today. So thank you so much for the memories. Thanks so much for the, the laughs, the, the wisdom, just everything you brought to the game, brought to life, brought to people, brought to your family. You're an incredible person. We're going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. Um, I know from here on out, I'm going to call any situation how I see it. I'm going to tell people exactly how it is. I'm going to tell you how a homicide did it. I'm going to pass on to the next generation just how great basketball is and how much love we have for it. So thank you, homicide. We love you and all the best to your family and all your loved ones. Wonderful words by the generation stars we see playing now. The commentary, of course, of Corey Homicide Williams and also... A lot of the DMs he would slide into the players and many of those players you see him speak there just to motivate them and make sure they knew not just what they were doing wrong or right, but their responsibility of being superstars in this country. Speaking of superstars, we are joined by Pete Hawley and Leonard Copeland. Uh, Hulls, I'll start with you, man. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Uh, managed to catch up with you guys the other day and kind of reminisce and uh, still sitting here doesn't feel real. And I got the... I was lucky enough to be that super sub on overtime sitting here with him. Um, mm. And those are the kind of memories. Commentary is one thing, but always not knowing, as Gazy was saying, what he's going to say next. <laughs> he's kind of, it kind of had you on edge, but and a feeling where you could go in there and be like, okay, uh, well, if he says something wild, I'm going to be in, I'm in the clear here. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a new commentator. I'm a little scared. Um, but yeah, it uh, still probably hasn't hit home um, doing that interview with him uh, a couple of months ago, sitting down his house, seeing with his family. So it's... Um, I'm glad we can do stuff like this and honour the great man, but yeah, it's uh, it's tough to be here. You did a great job of that yeah. as well, man. Really, really good job. And it gave, I think, all of us a bit of an insight 
you know, it was really great to hear in depth from him at that point of time in, in his fight mm. and his struggle. Mm. And I think his positivity on that day just really kind of inspired all of us. And I think that was what kind of took me by surprise was I left that and, and we knew this, this fight, the odds that he was insurmountable. And I left that thinking like, he's, he's going to beat this. Like yeah. if anyone's going to do it, it's Corey, right? He said that, didn't we? Yeah, and we yeah. were talking and then just to hear about uh, how much harder it got and how quickly it progressed. But it was two and a half hours of setup for that interview. I was watching him with his 16 month old daughter and his partner and that was probably the bit where I, I think back and I'm like, man, like that was, I, I saw Corey as the dad firsthand and I've got a similar age daughter. Mm -hmm. So that's where, uh, when the news came through that I really broke down, but we were talking a lot about it and um, just that interview and, and who he was is mm. who we get to remember him for. Okay, if you got to know him a fair bit, as we all did away from the basketball yes. court, but you had a fair bit in common. You, you, you come to Australia thinking he's gonna be a short stay and then you, you make your home here. Talk a little bit behind the scenes about what it was like to get to know him away from basketball. Well, he was, he was a bigger superstar than me. Like, <laughs> I, 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 we'd go out and hang out and people would know me, but everybody knew Corey because Corey was so brave and so brash and he was loud. He was the loudest one in the room, but you, he had you laughing mm. every time you seen him. So, um, you know, it's tough the, the journey that he's gone through, but like Drew said, he was the bravest guy I've ever seen I, go through it. You make a great point. If you went out with Corey, if you went out with him to have a drink or grab a meal, you had to be prepared that you weren't going to see him. <laughs> that's what would happen. He'd sit down and you'd order a drink and he'd be like, oh, man, and he'd leave for like 15 minutes. And I'm like, who's that? He's like, I don't know, some kid who backs for the bullets yeah. wants to know why they're no good. Oh, somebody's <laughs> going to yeah, yeah, I... come to the table who's that? and have a chat with him yeah. and he'd sign an autograph yeah. and take photos. And, and then say, occasionally he'd come back to pay the <laughs> bill. But there's something to settle up and just leave. And you're like, well, that was a nice night, Corey. Yeah. But that's... That was the, the measure of the great man he was. It didn't matter who was in the room. He would have, if you were happy to chat basketball or whatever it was, but he, he took it all and he, yes. and he had great conversations. And I think he enjoyed every single conversation he had, which was, which was a pleasure to be around if occasionally you still had two or three minutes with him, which was sometimes hard. And that all sounds fun and everything, but didn't he try to get you fired? Yeah. Yeah, let me tell you On something. national television? On national <laughs> television. Now, Drew spoke about this in the radio. <laughs> we were playing the Adelaide 36ers, and we were terrible. We, we, we were terrible. They beat us by 30 points. Mm -hmm. And all we hear is, I'd fire the whole team. <laughs> Get rid of the coaches. The water boy has to go. Everybody's getting fired, okay? He had a fair point. He yeah. had a fair point. He, he was in that. That's <laughs> the seat he was in, by listen the way. To but then here's the kicker. The next day, we're in, we're in the airport. I have to, we see him in the airport, and he's like, nothing's happened. He comes up, he gives me a hug, and my teammates are looking at me like, what are you doing hugging this guy? But because we had this relationship, yeah. Corey's my friend, I got to give him a hug. I said, Corey, what are you doing, bro? He goes, listen, I got a job to you do. You got a I'm job gonna to tell do. You, I'm going to tell you like it is, yep. and that's the brave part about Corey. Yeah. And even when I, took, when, I, when, I, when I sat in this seat and I started doing commentating, he called me and said, listen, you, you got friends on the other side, but you got to tell the truth. Mm. You got to tell it as you see it, and that's going to help you get through it. If you didn't disagree, and that's what I found in the last couple of days, if you didn't disagree talking to people with him with things that he said, you weren't following the lead closely. Yeah, right. You had to, because that was the part of, of what he did. And uh, my last memory talking to you a little bit about it was Royal Melbourne Golf Course is impossible to get on. Yep. This man got on Royal Melbourne Golf Course, played with ripped... Can't play a lick, though. Can't play, play a lick. <laughs> jean shorts, which you can't... You need a strict... Th he mm. still got on there, and his first tee shot didn't go past the ladies' tee, and he still played a full round. No one else in Australia can do that. Not Andrew Gaze, not Leonard Copen, but Corey did it. And that was his personality. Mm. You, you, it doesn't matter of what was said or what he was doing. As soon as you spoke a word to him, everything got broken down, and it was just about having a chat with a great human being, which we are all going to miss the opportunity to do. Boys, you've been great. Copes, you're in a really tough situation this year in NBL overtime. You jumped in and you were, mm. you, were, you were brilliant this year. So we, Liam and I and everyone from behind the scenes, want to thank you so greatly for what you did this year in really trying circumstances. And for that, we love you, man. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate uh, it Scott Roth, Dean Vickerman, two of the best coaches in the NBL. Let's see what they had to say about our man, Homicide. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Scott and my daughter, Danae. Um, we got some unfortunate news, obviously, a couple of days ago about the passing of uh, Corey, and we wanted to uh, send a short video uh, to his family. Our prayers and thoughts are with them. He's been a huge impact uh, with the Jack Jumpers the last three years. Uh, he's kind of been the number one fan uh, from afar, and he's been a great friend for the last three years. I really was uh, obviously really sad when we woke up to, to the news. Um, 
I am happy though that he got to see us win a championship and he was all about it. And um, about five or six weeks ago, we were lucky enough to do a podcast together with him. Um, we just want to share uh, our, our thoughts and prayers with him and um, go ahead, Dane. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that Corey was an absolute light um, ever since we entered the season three years ago. He always backed us, um, gave us respect when nobody else would, and it was an absolute joy to watch basketball commentary because of him, because of his big personality and everything he brought um, to, the, to the table, to that overtime table, and as he would commentate during games. Um, for the first few years, I got to just chat with him over Twitter and the goal was always to get him down to a game in Tassie. Um, that didn't happen, but I am super grateful that I was able to meet him at game three in the playoffs. Um, and I'll never forget that game. I'll never forget meeting him in person. That was a highlight of mine. Um, that was, that was huge for me. So I appreciate that. Um, so grateful for that. Um, love Corey so much, so much respect. And yeah, the podcast we did was, was a lot of fun and we miss him and the sport just simply will not be the same without him. Best wishes to his family. Our prayers and thoughts are with you. Rest in peace, my friend. Got my Crocs shirt on. Um, my memories of Corey Homicide Williams coaching against him. You just can't stay in front of him. He's the only, he's one of the only players that we've coached against that when we shoot it, just go find Corey. Don't let him get it. He's gonna get down the floor, get to his paint quickly. Just don't let him catch it. Um, yeah, he was so hard to stay in front of. My other memory of him as a young coach, um, being in Townsville, going to the bank, and here's Corey, drinks for everybody, taking care of young players, taking care of coaches, looking after everybody, having a good time. Um, miss you, brother. Beautiful words from Scott Roth and Dean Vickerman. We've got the wonderful backdrop here of Corey Williams, and here is a wonderful photo as you welcome Nearly Meadows into the, the NBL Overtime Studio. That is, we'll start with that because it wasn't that long ago, Nearly, but it was a wonderful interview. We, we knew the battle, it was the first game he'd back. You had that great relationship, both on and that great chemistry on the screen. And welcome, how are you doing? I'm okay, my heart's racing actually being up here, um, but that, photo is going to be so precious to me and, and there's a couple more photos of us hugging afterwards. That was the first time I'd seen Corey back in Melbourne um, since he found out the news and you can see the smile on my face. Like that's how he made people mm. feel and I'm so grateful that he knew what he meant to all of us and you know cancer is a horrible thing but it gave us the opportunity to tell him just how much we love him and just what he brought to the game we love as well and, and that's what that interview you know a, a snapshot of, of that and also the the MVP that we we're all at we got to lead a, a standing ovation and that was such a special moment for him and for us and for him to look out on this huge you know floor and, and see everyone standing and just showering love on him was such a cool moment for all of us um and we got to well I was cheering like a lunatic but um cry cheer you know and and that to me will always be so special because the thing about Corey that will stay with me is that there is no better feeling on earth than feeling safe and celebrated mm. to be exactly who you are and that's what he did for me and that's what he did for a lot of people. And that will never leave me, that way that he made me feel about myself, both as a friend but also on air. He gave me the courage yeah. to go on air and be full Narrowly Meadows, you know, <laughs> bring it all out there. Yeah. And I loved working with him because of that. And there's few people that bring that sort of energy like he does. Nez, you, we heard from Trevor Gleeson and John Riley a little earlier. You're from WA. The Perth Wildcats are from WA. <laughs> Corey had a special relationship with the people of WA. Tell us about his relationship with the Wildcats and the Red Army. And that's the thing. We worked together for the last decade, but before that, I, I'm a lifelong Wildcats <laughs> fan. And I knew him first as, you know, the player that would come and torment the crowd and the crowd would torment him. And he did have that unique relationship with Perth Wildcats fans to the point that my mum didn't like him. <laughs> when I worked <laughs> with him, like him, my mum said, 
I don't like Corey Homicide Williams. I don't like all the hate he brings to Perth, all the hate he brings to Bryce Cotton. And Corey's trash talk extended to family members. I've got videos of him going, you know what, Penny Meadows, you know what? The cats are going down today, Penny. And I love that. I love that about him, that no one was off the table, whether it was Leonard Copeland, we heard from earlier, or my mum. He, and I think Larry also mentioned this, that 95% of your body or people who didn't like him is that 5% that actually made everyone love him. So I have no doubt your mum came around at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, she did. Absolutely. Because his passion and the way that he grew the game, he, you know, along with Larry, is probably the most mm -hmm. important person getting the NBL to where it is now after going through a few of those quieter years because his passion was just everyone wanted to hear what he had to say about the league that we love. Um, you know, even Bryce Cotton and the banter that they would have together and Bryce eventually came out and said, how many championships have you won? He goes... I've won one, I've won one in the D-League. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you'd have all of those sorts of bits of banter. But um, once again, the, the thing going back almost 10 years to when we first worked together, that famous saying of his, I appreciate you, I appreciate you. And this is before it was a popular saying, right? And when he first said it, I just thought, I love that. I love that because it's such a, it, you felt it when he said it to you. I appreciate you, my man. And you just... Oh, sat with you. And I've got to say, I will forever appreciate that man. Yeah, he, he had so many amazing sayings, right? <laughs> on this desk, he made it famous that it's, it's the same a Cupcake League. He would tell us always to save it for on air and to keep that same energy, fam. My favourite was, if you ain't got haters, you ain't popping. <laughs> <laughs> Which was his way of just letting you know, hey, be yourself. Say what you want to say. If you feel like you read the game or a player or a coach or a team in a certain way, say it own it and feel it. And it's to what you were talking about before, about how fun he was to work with. Mm. Because whether it was a game or at the desk or pre-game or whatever, you just knew, you know, things were going to roll, things were going to be fun, things were going to be upbeat because Corey was in the house. And the road trips that we got to do, right, whether it was to Perth, whether it was to Adelaide, the fact that we got to, you know, get in the car together, go out to venue together, go out for dinner afterwards together. Um, you know, there were so many beautiful moments that we all got to have with him. Um, and, and like you said, he, we all just got to be ourselves. And when you get a group of people who feel all authentically able to be themselves because one man in the room makes you feel that way, mm. like that is just so special. Mm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. It is, it's a wonderful <laughs> photo and um, uh, the relationship that you and him had and the chemistry that you had on the screen was as obvious as one person watching it for the first ever time or for Liam and I who would have seen it 100,000 times. So we know you heard <laughs> uh, but we love the fact that you come and join us, so thank you. And really, like, thoughts with Corey's family. I mean, I got to meet his daughter, Gabby, at that last game and, like, all of our thoughts. We hope that you grow up knowing how special your dad is and was. He was an unbelievable man. He most certainly was, and he did a lot of work with Derek Rucker and John Casey, and they shared their thoughts. I'll start off just by saying that, you know, I'm deeply sad, and, and this is really a tough thing to try and recount moments with Corey, what he meant to not only me, but so many people throughout Australia and the globe. And, you know, our relationship was not only just about basketball, but about life and the vibration of life and how to make others better, how we could use basketball and the platforms that it provided us to make a change. And I think Corey was exceptional in that regard. He was able to reach out to so many people and spread positivity. And I was just very, amazed at how much enthusiasm he had in that quest and our friendship really grew over the years and you know over the past season of the NBL I thought it really grew he would always message me and make jokes or give me his opinion on various subjects he messaged me in games and that's something that's probably really going to hit me as missing as we head in the NBL 25 but it's a huge loss. I mean, there's no way to get around it. And I hope that we can learn from Corey and take pride in what he did and, you know, the way he lived his life and 
he really changed the way NBL media is presented to the world. He went out there on a limb, stuck his neck out there, made comments, analyzed the game, brought an energy in and an entertainment to it that I don't think we had seen before. And it's really paved the way for your current team of, of NBL media and so forth, which in spirit, he'll always be a part of. And, um, you know, I'm just tremendously grateful for the friendship I was able to have with him and what he did for all of us and helping to get this league where it is. It still doesn't feel real that our great mate Corey is no longer with us. To me, he was larger than life, a force of nature that no one or no thing could ever bring down. I guess that's why there was never any doubt in my mind that he was going to beat the odds. And that's probably why it was so crushing when the sad news of his passing came through. It just didn't seem believable and he deserved so much better. From the first time I met Corey 17 years ago when he was playing with Townsville, you knew he was different and he was going to be great for basketball in Australia. He certainly talked the talk, which was great for our NBL broadcasts, but he also walked the walk. Well, probably strutted the walk if the truth be known. But behind the flashy play, the non-stop talking and the mayhem he created, there was a huge heart. And I doubt any of us will ever know all the things that Corey did to help lift others up. So that's how Corey will live on in my world. Fearless, larger than life, a man with the courage of his convictions. I'll miss him and cherish the times that we spent together. Every time I think of Corey, my heart is going to ache but it's also going to bring a smile to my face because I know I'm a better person for knowing Corey Williams. What he did for the sport of basketball in Australia will never be forgotten. And he'd want us to carry on that legacy, the crusade that he wanted to have to make the NBL the best it could be. He'd also want us to be the best people we can be. So even though he may no longer be with us, to light up a room, to put a smile on your face, He'll continue to inspire us. He leaves a big legacy. My deepest condolences to his family and the many friends he made around the world who are grieving with us at this time. There will only ever be one Corey Williams and may he rest in peace. Very true, John Casey, Derek Rucker with their wonderful tributes to our man Corey. Homicide Williams and we are joined in the NBL Overtime Studio by two-time NBL champion, Aussie Boomer, Dion Vasilovic in the house, man. He, uh, well, he wasn't against sliding into the DMs of current players to let them know if they're doing good or bad things. Did you, did you get a couple over the years? Yeah, we, uh, I got plenty during that New Zealand series uh, two seasons ago. And, I mean, that's just who he was. He wanted to get the best out of me. And, you know, he gave me the crap how badly I played in that semi-final series against Cairns and ended up being really impactful in that final series against New Zealand. And now I'm a two-time champion. And that's just who he was. He wanted to make great players great, even though he had to say things you didn't want to hear. So, again, he'll be greatly missed, not only in the basketball community here in Australia, but I think around the world. DJ, I feel like one of the cool things about playing in this league in recent times has been Corey. You know, the fact that, you know, Corey brought eyeballs to the league and he brought controversy and he said what he said. What, what did you as a player in these recent times, while he was doing his thing on the broadcast and on this desk, appreciate what he brought? I think he just put NBL on the map. I mean, you know, yourself with the next stars, how Larry's taken over and done a great job with the league. You needed someone to kind of push it and he did that. Um, and we all appreciate for him and I think he advocated more than anyone's ever done and that's the legacy he'll not only leave on the basketball court but in the commentary and I think he'll be missed you know dearly. Did you reply to those DMs? Like, did the players reply to those DMs? We just sort of steer it away and then get back to him later. Oh, trust me, I responded. <laughs> we went at it, you know, back and forth a few times. But again, as I said, he wanted me to be a, be a better player in that series and. He got the best out of you, even though if you, you had to hear the wrong things. And, you know, we jawed back at each other, but I wasn't afraid to clap back when I had to. So, I mean, that just, just, you know, he'd be greatly missed, honestly. So he motivates people in so many different ways. And I think that's been really obvious over the last five or six days with our continued story. But I am interested to understand how he's motivated your fashion. Because <laughs> you're in a bomber jacket and you're in a... T I know there's got to be a story about this. Yeah, no, look, I came, I came dressed for Corey yeah. today. I mean, this... I wore this because he was just so much about the league. Yeah. 
Man, you said he put him on. He put it on the map. Like he was just so much about pushing the league forward and telling the world it's not a cupcake league. He did that publicly, but he also did it privately mm. when guys would give him a call and from from the states and be like, "Hey, is it is it for real? Like, should I come?" And he was like, "Absolutely, it's highly. You want to get back to the association? This is the place to come." So that's why I wore this, and I wore the bomber jacket because. <laughs> You know, Corey, when he'd come into the studio, he would just wear whatever the heck he wanted, mm. right? And he wore loud clothing. And I don't mean loud like it looked bright, like it was kind of noisy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like audio technicians yeah. like button-up shirts, don't they, Cam? Like yeah. what you're wearing now, they can clip the mic on. He would wear T-shirts and jumpers and jackets and things, so... That's why I came rocking this out today. And the best thing about that is we'd, we'd have someone who come in be filling with the mic, trying to do everything in their expertise. To, he just wouldn't care. He'd just sit there. Like, it's <laughs> like, oh, this is what I do. This is what I'm going to wear. So you find a way around this. Mm -hmm. So when I get animated, it isn't going to rustle through the, uh, <laughs> the, the speakers of, <laughs> of TV. Do, do you take it as a, as a... He once told me that the only people, the people he really has these um, critical memories or, or conversations with are the people he thinks he can promote greatness into. So mm. I took that as in, I don't think he's hitting up every single player in the NBL, but did you take it as a, as a compliment when he did reach out to you, knowing full well that he's probably not hitting up a guy who's not playing great men? Yeah, events. I actually give him a lot of credit because he was the one who was advocating me to win Rookie of the Year mm. when I first joined the league and he pushed it hard and he was kind of connecting back and forth via DMs of, you know, what I should be doing better or how great I'm playing and then that kind of trek it off over the years. And I actually remember when we were at the awards night uh, he, me and him were leaving at the same time. We had a good 15-minute conversation outside, and he said, like, he's proud where I've, you know, come from, having the Achilles injury and obviously two mm. championships, and then obviously the whole debacle with Sydney, and now playing in Adelaide. And he just said, just keep pushing. Like, I'm good for the league. You know, he's very proud of who I am. And again, I'm gonna do everything I can to honour him um, in this league. Play, you know, passionate. You know, I like to say things on social media as well. So again, you got to kind of just keep going for it. And I think the league should honour him with a, a patch on the jerseys moving forward with CW. Um, I know they did it in the NBA with Bill Russell and on the court and I think Corey just leaves a big, big legacy behind that we have to continue to honour no matter what. I don't know about you, Liam, but I'm getting a feeling that when uh, the 36ers get a big win next year on the road, DJ's going to take the, the jersey off and just parade it around to the fans. Can you, can you go that? Look, well, uh, I won't say <laughs> where I'm going to do it, but that might have to do <laughs> he, um, he, he had that ability, and I think this is something that's shown through. He had the ability to be impactful with his words, but you could take it 100% in the right way. There was never any animosity towards anything. That's what I'm hearing from a, from a few players around the league that I've spoken to privately, and I think that shines through. And that's because he would keep guys like you to account. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, when you go out and have 10 threes on South East Melbourne, mm -hmm. blow them up for 40, he was the first guy to sit here on this desk and talk it up yeah. yep. and talk about how great you'd, you'd performed. That, I'm sure that's what you and other players appreciated. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, he'll criticise you when you're not playing good, but he'll also give you the respect and recognition when you did play well. And mm. obviously, that's just who he was as a person. So, you know, there's full credit to him. And, uh, yeah, we'll miss him, man. Like, it's, it's a tough... Like, when I heard about it, it was very tough. Like, I was just shook. I, uh, you know, strangers in the NBL overtime studio. You've been on the show. You were famously on the show in their celebrations of your first championship, yep. where you said, uh, "I think you're in contract negotiations." Had to roll a few things back, yeah. but that's what Corey <laughs> liked, right? He, in the heat of the moment, he would say something, then he'd have to sort of backpedal every now and then to explain himself. So we love the fact you've dropped in today yeah. to, to honour the great man that we all miss so greatly. Yeah, I appreciate Thank you for having me, and yeah, we're going to miss Corey deeply. So I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. DJ. Superstar, as are these men. Daryl McDonald, Scott Machado, just two who are leading the tributes for our man, Corey Homicide Williams. When I first heard, uh, I was lost for words. Um, you know, even now, I'm, you know, I'm still lost for words. You know, I can't believe you're gone. Uh, but I knew, I knew, you know, the one thing I knew you, you would be a guy that you, you're going to fight. Like, you was going to fight this thing to the end. Um, and you did that. You know, just thinking about you and your smile and, you know, your smile will light up any room. You know, your, your, your energy was infectious, you know, everywhere you are. And I used to love our, you know, I loved our chats, man. Like, I remember you, like, you always come up, you know, a lot of time our chats wasn't even about basketball. Man. But you come up, you dab me up, give me a hug, say, what up, OG? And you just start to talking to me, telling me about what you got happening, man. Like, what you, what you got in the works. You know, I used to love those. And then, you know, basketball-wise, you know, I remember you coming out and you guys come and played us at the Tigers. 
And, you know, you, 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 you didn't have a great game, and, and we beat you guys. But then two weeks later, we had to come to Townsville. And right off the tip, I could see the Bronx coming out. You know, from the, from the tip, you coming at me every time. And I couldn't do, I couldn't do nothing. There wasn't nothing I could do. And then, you know, you, you make a layup, you know, you, you pat me on my behind, you hit a jumper, you pat me on, behind, on my behind running down court with that smile of yours. You know what I mean? And then I thought, first thing I thought was, this guy's going to light this league up. And you absolutely did, man. You know, you, 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 left a, you left a mark on the game here. And you also did that with your voice. Like, you put the game on the map, you know, using your voice. Um, you really promoted the league. You know, the NBL, the NBL's been around a long time. But you also, you, you've added to that with your voice, man. So, you know, you, you more than appreciate it. Um, again, you know, you left us too soon. Um, your legacy is going to be... It's going to live on here. You know what I mean? It's going to live on here. And like you touched, a, you touched a lot of people. You know, the, you know, people you've been around, you, you've touched a lot of people. You know what I mean? And it's, it, again, it's, it's hard. You know, it's, 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 it's a tough one. You know what I mean? But I just want to say, man, just rest up. Rest up, homie. You know, your laughter is going to always be here. You know, your, ener your energy is going to shine down on us. Continue to watch over us and until we meet again. You know, we meet in heaven, we're going to be hooping. You're going to be missed down here. You know, sleep sleep easy, my brother. Later. Corey Homicide Williams. A name we'll never forget. A legend in all aspects of life. I met Corey playing street basketball. When I was in college down in New York City, West 4th. You guys might know it as the cage. But Corey was smack talking all game. And I didn't know why. But come to find out, he did that everywhere he went to the point that he ended up becoming a commentator and was very good at it. Something that was so natural to him. To me, it was like he almost wanted to motivate people the way he commentated, simply to get you to either prove him right or prove him wrong. But what he really wanted was for you to maximize your potential. And everything that you earned, you had to fight for. And that's what Corey did. That's what he stood for. Even as he fought cancer, he was doing motivational speaking, appearances, and even commentating on some games. Corey was the definition of a fighter. I am forever grateful to have you in my life, for you to be able to put the bar high for me to come to Australia and me have to maximize my potential. Thank you. Thank you so much, my friend. We're all gonna miss you. Love to you and the family. Corey Homicide Williams, legend. I remember in 2004, I was working for the Denver Nuggets. We held an open tryout in the parking lot for fans. We had those roll away baskets. Hundreds, hundreds of fans showed up. It was for an opportunity to train and work out with our team. We brought a few people into the facility for a closer look, see what we had. A couple guys here, a couple guys there. I noticed one guy, I look over one of my colleagues, I'm like, I know that guy, that's Corey, Corey Williams. I was from New York area also, so I knew of Corey well. Man, he came in there with such a fierce attitude, trying to make that team, just made such an impression on us. He walked in that gym like he had 10 years NBA experience, just the swagger, the mindset that I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure I stand out. Um, his, his swagger, his, his whole approach to everything, just so first class, loved everybody, lose a true legend, thoughts and prayers go out to him and his family from the Brisbane Bullets. Rest in peace, Corey. Homicide Williams. Chris Bongras here from the Sydney Kings. Everyone here at the Kings, the Flames and Hoops Capital want to send out love and condolences to the entire Williams family. Um, his friends and the broader NBL community for the tragic loss of Corey. Um, you know, Corey's recognised as, as one of the major personalities and drivers of this league over the last couple of years. And I think everyone is privileged to have had him involved, have known him, um, to have just felt his infectious energy and drive for basketball. Um, and just want to thank him for everything that he's done for basketball in this country. 
he came here as an import, put a stamp on the league, ex-MVP, and then to move out of basketball into retirement and, and do what he's done in promoting the league um, and helping grow this thing to what it is today. I know that he'll be missed by everyone. His infectious personality and hot takes and, um, you know, again, desire to, to help build and grow this league um, will be sorely missed. So I love condolences um, to everyone who's been affected by this tragic loss. Wonderful memories and wonderful stories and wonderful tributes from men and women right around the basketball world, not just in this particular country, on Corey Homicide Williams. I, I want to just, for people who behind the scenes here at NBL Overtime, it's traditionally how it would go, because he'd never come to a meeting. Like, we, we, we don't have a great deal of meetings here at NBL Overtime, but when we did try to bring a little structure in, he never came. So we didn't know what he was going to say, and I think that was the beauty of what it would be. But I, I'd start a show, and I'd be like, hey, and in this particular studio, he would be in the middle, and I would be like, this is what's happening, rah, 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 rah. And then I'd look to Corey, and he'd be just like... And he pushed the Liam, and I'd be like, oh, he doesn't even know what's going on. He's got no, isn't going You'd say what you would say so perfectly, and then bang! He would look straight down his camera, and his ability to maybe take an extra 30 seconds, or to be the... The, the second server, so to speak, but his ability to be able to conjure up stuff he's been thinking about and deliver was a, a, as good as anyone I've known in the caper. And the reason why he did that, and he would always say to us, save it for on air. Mm -hmm. Save it for on air. He didn't want to do the meetings, he didn't want to talk about it beforehand, and the reason is because he's authentic. That's Corey was, on air, off air. He didn't want to go over it beforehand, <laughs> so that then we had to kind of, we already knew what each other was going to say. He wanted to be authentic because that's who he was, and I think that came across. And I, I can always remember on this desk, um, Corey and I would always want to each, we'd always want to go second. Mm. I'd want to have him ta have a take so that then I could, you know, come back at it. And he would always be like, no, nah, no, nah, go to Liam. <laughs> so I'd say something and he'd be like, no, 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 listen, this is how it, how it really was. But man, we had, we just had so much fun yeah. working he, with him and, and getting to know him over the years. He did famously come to one meeting, actually, last year, remember? But he did it on Zoom from the parking lot at a petrol station. Remember, <laughs> we all got called into headquarters. We all thought we were getting fired. It was a good meeting. And then we're like, where's Corey? And he zooms on in from a server about a K down the road. He's like, man, I'm good, fellas. I'm good. I, I, there's one particular moment and one story that I, I need to share. And I think a lot of people are aware of this. He, he walked into this studio in, in 2019 and he said, fellas, I'm going to the Olympic Games. <laughs> he goes, I'm going to get the Olympic tat. And I, we're like, congratulations. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, I'm not just I'm manifesting it. I want to call the 3x3 at the Tokyo Olympic Games. Yeah. He's like, well, what have you done? He's like, nothing. I've just come up with a plan that I'm going to go. Anyway, next thing you know, he's overseas. He was in Mongolia or somewhere. He mm -hmm. was he was calling. He was wrapped in a blanket for like six hours by himself calling his 3x3 Olympic qualifying. It's like, man, this is crazy. Mm. Then COVID hits. So that looks dead and buried. It's going to be very hard for anyone to go over there and not be from Tokyo and be able to do it. Next thing you know, hey, what are you doing today, man? I'm on, I'm on the way to the airport. Now, keeping in mind, we couldn't leave our house. You live in Melbourne. <laughs> you can find to your house for 23 hours a day. He got on a plane. Yep. He got to Tokyo. He called it from his studio, but yeah. he still had a great deal of Instagram sort of uh, stories and, and videos to put out there. But that's what he did. He manifested stuff better than any human I've ever met. And that's what probably shocks us all because he believed anything was possible. And mm. when he spoke about the battle he was in and he spoke to us and he spoke to both of us about how big his return to NBL overtime was going to be, we just 100% fully invested in the belief that he was going to be OK. Nothing, nothing was too big for him to, to have a major crack at. Yeah, it's a great story because it's a perfect example of how he just always would overcome the odds. And he did that his entire life. He would talk about where he came from and how he wasn't supposed to be here and he wasn't supposed to have done the things that he did. Um, but he just had a mentality of just... If he set his mind to something, mm -hmm. you know, he was, he was going to get it done. And you know what's been interesting for me these last few days um, is just seeing on social media in particular, you always knew Corey was a man of the people, but the amount of people he knew or knew him, yeah. or feel close to Corey in some kind of way. Now, there's a lot of people who never met him who feel close to, you know, Corey because they watched him for years and years and they loved watching him on TV and, and listening to him call their, call their games of their teams. But a lot of people he did know personally. Mm. And, and then the other thing I think that it deserves mention, man, is, like, I don't think anyone here in Australia, any of us, 
fully appreciate how much of a legend mm. he is back in New York on that street ball scene. You know, like all the big names since forever. Homicide is one of those guys. You don't get a nickname like that unless you are killing everybody on a regular basis. So such uh, larger than life character. I think John Casey wrapped it up so beautifully and, and DMAC said the same thing. It's hard to just accept that it's real. As I walked up down the street towards the studio today, it just, it just felt odd that Corey wasn't going to be here with us. Now, of course, he is in spirit, but, man, we're gonna, we already do and, and we are going to miss you, man. Saturday morning, uh, Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre for his funeral. Uh, if you can't be there, nbl.com.au. Majority of the major watch things on the NBL website has involved Corey Williams, so I expect Saturday morning right around the globe to be jam-packed, nbl.com.au. We hope that, yes. Oh, just before you finish off, man. Absolutely. I, I, I narrowly mentioned this before. Just, just to his family. Mm. You know, his family back home in the States, but, but also those here... You already know how much Corey loves you and, and, and loved you, but, man, let us just reiterate it. Because when behind the scenes, when the cameras weren't rolling, when nobody was listening or watching, he would talk about you. And, you know, to his beautiful daughters, uh, more so than, than anything, man, like as you grow and you live out your glorious lives, you, you should know how much your dad loved and appreciated you. We'll miss him. We love him. He's always going to be a huge part of not just this show, but us and basketball in this country.